In this video, we will learn to model a complex vaulting system using a network of intersecting curves. It extends the hanging chain simulation covered in Module 2, Chapter 5, where a complex catenary arch network was derived using several interconnected curves. This time we will use a similar approach on mesh geometry. The objective is to achieve vaulted geometry similar to the vaulted willow by Mark Fawns. Let's understand the workflow before we begin building the definition. You may open the grasshopper file provided in the resource folder to follow along. We start with some intersecting lines, and offset them in both directions to create the lofted surfaces. These lofted surfaces are converted into individual B reps using the Boolean function. It is further split into smaller quad surfaces, and converted into a low poly mesh model. Subdivision of the low poly mesh gives us the base mesh for form finding simulation. For goals, we use anchor with semicircular targets, spring force through edge length goal, uniform load on all points, and an additional spring force on the naked edges to smoothen out the edge contours. Since this is a longer definition, we will cover the steps till the base mesh in part 1, and focus on the simulation setup in part 2. Step 1. Let's begin by drawing the line network in Rhino viewport. We set the unit system to meters for this exercise, and work within a boundary of 8 by 12 meters. Draw four intersecting lines within the boundary, and ensure there is sufficient length after the intersect point. And reference them in Grasshopper using the curve container component. Ideally, this additional length should be greater than the intended offset dimension. Step 2. Offset the line segments by one unit in both directions. Use a panel to create a multi-line data list consisting of numbers 1 and negative 1. Connect the lines into the curve input, and graft it so that positive 1 and negative 1 offset happens for each curve. The output is a branched data tree with each offset curve in separate branches. If we analyze the path of each branch, the first number represents the base curve, and the second number represents the offset direction. The next step is to loft each pair of offset curves. We will use the trim tree function to collapse the outermost branch of this data tree, and combine each pair of offset curves into individual branches. This is visible in the panel where we had one item per branch earlier, and now we have two items per branch. Pass this data tree into the loft command, and we get four different B-reps rectangles, each representing one of the four initial lines. Pass these B-reps through a curve container component to extract the naked edge. And use the region union function to combine these four separate rectangles into a single intersected boundary. Thank you. 
Use boundary surface command to create a trimmed surface out of the unified polyline boundary. And that's the intended output from step two. Step three, explode the starting line network to ensure there are no polylines in the list. Next, we need to identify the intersection points and shatter these lines at the intersection points. Bring the multiple curves intersection component into the canvas. This component gives us the intersection points as a separate list and other parameters representing these points on the curve. We have already covered the workflow of dividing the curves at intersection points. To optimize time, we copy this portion of the definition from the hanging chain simulation, covered in Module 2, Chapter 5. Flatten the output from explode function. The output from these series of steps is a list containing these line segments. Step 04. Our aim now is to convert this trimmed surface into a mesh, a quad mesh. Using a mesh B reps converter does not result in a quad only mesh. What we need to do is identify these connections. and split the surface into multiple quad faces. Take the list of line segments from step number 3, and extract the endpoints. Combine all endpoints into a single list. This list contains several duplicate points, because points at the intersection are shared between two or more line segments. So when we use point groups to group these points based on a distance of 0.01, we get a data tree with 11 branches. Eight of these branches have a single item representing the corner points, and three of these branches have four items each, representing the intersection points. Use the prune tree component to isolate branches with more than one item. Prune tree is used to extract branches from a data tree, based on the number of items within them. Set the minimum value at 2, and maximum value at 10. This will ensure that branches of length between 2 and 10 will be extracted as output.
Use list item to isolate the intersection point from each branch. Step 5. Deconstruct the surface to get the vertices of this surface. Use the closest points component The logic we apply here is that, we need to find the closest surface vertices for each intersection point to create these lines. The number of closest points per intersection is determined by the number of duplications of each intersection point in step 4. Connect the surface vertices to cloud input and intersection points to point input. The count per intersection point comes from the list length of this point list. The resulting closest points list consists of three branches, with four closest points in each. Draw a line between each intersection point and its closest points. And we get the line segments to split our surface into quads. Use these line segments and the initial list of lines. to split the surface using surface split function. Flatten the curves inputs. The output from this function is a list of trimmed surfaces. Use the simple mesh component to convert these trimmed surfaces into a low poly quad mesh. Join, weld, and unify normals to join individual quads into a single mesh. Refine this mesh with level 3 subdivision. And we have a subdivided base mesh for our kangaroo simulation. And the way this definition has been set, we can manipulate the initial curves, or add more curves, and the definition will give us a corresponding quad mesh like this.
The only catch is that each line must extend sufficiently beyond the intersection point, else it will result in an unintended mesh topology. This concludes part 1 of Network Vaults. Try to build this definition from scratch, or use the exercise file to proceed to part 02 of this exercise.